Instead of conscious, consciousness being an emergent property of neural networks, uh -huh. it's saying no, actually it goes deeper than that into quantum computing networks yeah, into yeah. microtubules. And so my understanding of that is that if uh, the brain dies, you're still pretty much dead. So, um, uh, so this idea that there's other informational domains that our mind can navigate through and um, including maybe, you know, out-of-body travel, uh, you know, stuff like that. I mean, uh, some survival of consciousness after the death experience, some maybe pre-existence of consciousness before even animals or any of this, or the Big Bang even. Um, so what is the substrate for that uh -huh. consciousness? And like, how can we probe it and test it and see it? Because when psychics talk about energies, seems to me what they're sensing is in their own nervous system. It's not something out there. I, I have meters. I can measure. I can probe. I can, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and we're not seeing electromagnetic waves or phenomena or any kind of known phenomena. So some kind of almost like quantum informational domain. I jumped on that um, hammer off microtubule theory when in fact, the, as you rightly point out, the more common um, approach to consciousness is to see it as an emergent property of, of, of systems. Um, although, um, I'm not sure that um, emergent property means anything more than we don't know what it is. Um, I think it has something to do with the fact that we're asking the wrong questions. Why do things, why do, you know, and this goes back to Suzanne and TEDx and all this, why are scientists so resistant to things that, that vanish, that are clearly present, that vanish when a certain sort of attention is put on them. Why, um, why, be, um, why not explore those for, for what they are? Um, one of the people Suzanne intro introduced me to, Russell Tard, as many of you know, is a physicist who does um, remote viewing. And, obviously is doing something because the Defense Department used him for years to remote view Russian missile installations and to train them how to do it. Russell said in one of his writings that when what got him into this whole thing was when he was interested in phony magic, like stage magic. And he recognized that when he was doing stage magic, he was getting information that he shouldn't be getting. Um, so what does that say about the universe? That in some sense, when you begin to try and trick people, and you say, I'm just um, you know, playing a trick, the, the universe just suddenly starts supplying what it shouldn't be supplying. And even Jane Roberts' original Seth experience was from playing around with a Ouija board. <laughs> and look at all, all that came out of that. Um, I've always felt that there's, there's a, that the nature of this stuff is that it's never going to be where you're trying to measure it. And I can't say exactly why that is, except that, um, that it's taking place on a basis such that your attitude towards it plays a huge role in what it is. So when you shift your attitude towards it, it's no fool. It's going to disappear. But at the same time, when you're just saying, I'm just messing around, it'll, and you're putting no pressure on it, it'll just, it'll just show up. It's been on my mind, bec too, because we, um, my role with North Atlantic is very in and out these days. Um, but I found us an author in the town where we're now mainly living, Portland, Maine, who runs the Cryptozoology Museum there, and it's the largest one in the world. And, we got a, we got him to, we gave him money to write a book. What he calls the celebrity cryptids. The celebrity cryptids are like, you know, we all know what they are. They're they're Sasquatch, Yeti, mm -hmm. Bigfoot. You know, they're the Loch Ness monster. Crop they're, circle. No, they're not crop circles. No, no. So <laughs> they're they're not cryptids, and they're, they're Fortean, but they're not cryptids. So I'm just talking sense. about things that yeah. people, you know. Right, but they're. <laughs> but it's true; they have the same characteristic um, that, as cryptids do. But um, it's like people ignore the whole field of cryptozoology, which has found many species which were just unlocated before. 
that people didn't find because they didn't believe anybody's accounts, and then they went deeper into the jungle in Borneo, and there it was, um, what they had been talking about. But celebrity cryptids <laughs> seem to not ever appear. And as, as one critic said, how can you have with like seven feet tall, 400 pound hominids running around North America, and not one of them slip up <laughs> and be found? Um, unless they, he said, unless they're both more and less than what they seem. Uh, and, um, and Lauren, our author, doesn't believe that. He's kind of a more concretist in that sense. He says, no, it is possible for them to hide. Um, well, I don't know, that's a, that's a dead end to follow that. But I, I do think that, that I would not expect there to be an experiment for any of these things that's going to work. I can't exactly tell you why, but if I, I feel it lies somewhere in a Freudian direction and has to do with resistance at, at a really deep level. I think that there's a, and I don't mean resistance per, ego, egoically in this case, I mean there's a resistance built into the um, individuation process in the universe itself, and that the moment you try and prove something that it, that that it's um, that in some sense to prove it takes you out of the paradigm, um, the, the paradigm you're living, then it falls apart. And then Suzanne, Suzanne's kind of wonderful because she's um, she's like the person who will ignore all these clues and she'll just run right into it, like running into a wall at the time, <laughs> and then be surprised that she gets knocked down. But it's like. They don't, Suzanne's always like, they really want to hear about these things. They really want to know about, like, if crop circles are made by these other consciousnesses, they really want to know about this, and this would, like, change their whole life. They don't want to know about it. They, it's exactly what they don't want to know about, and they've set up their whole structure, not just so that they won't know about it, but so that when you bring it to them, that their structure is set up to, you know, swallow it and make it go away. And then you set up a seminar, and then they want no part of you, and you're like, offended? It's like, it's like it, it, luckily, the universe is operating at such a complex level that it's got both you and them figured out. So, otherwise, you, otherwise, you'd end up with a really unhappy scenario, which is exactly the scenario you, you want, which is that you present the crop circles and they go, wow, we were missing this whole thing. And then they're instantly converted. And then that's the worst thing in the world because then nothing happens. Nothing at all happens. Everybody embraces it, and it's like a jamboree, and it's just like it's just like Esther Scientology or something. Oh, it's just, it's just I have my scenario. You know, everybody doesn't go to the jam. It's going to take a much longer time. Well, I'm impatient. Man. But, but it's it's good that she does it. Though. It's totally because, good that she does it. That's the paradox. But I want I want to say one thing about it. I thought to say when you're talking yeah. about all this. You know, this hoaxing is a huge part of this whole phenomenon. And of cryptids, too. Who? Of cryptids, too. Uh, uh, what does that ah, mean? Okay. Right. You know, okay. Bigfoot. Okay. And, okay. You mean okay. making, People making up, up things. Creatures you know, okay. Okay. Putting on ape suits. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but what's interesting in relation to what we've been talking about is that the hoaxers, the ones who are dedicated and do a lot of it, they insist that they're being guided. So, you mm. know, when you say, how can they do that as well as they do it, because they've gotten very good at certain mechanical aspects of it. They can't change the biology of the plants, but, uh, and they say it, it, they're, they're, they're getting guidance. Oh, uh, they're just saying right. that. Well, you want the universe to be complex enough that, it, that those people can't get at it with artificial intelligence And thank God there are cope circles all over the world who are obviously not being made <laughs> by hoaxers. Not so yes, obviously to I, 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 Two summers ago, these uh, geologists in Maine, who were going to probably do a book by the very hardcore materialists, were discussing crop circles, and they go, oh yeah, these two guys in England, yeah. these are serious yeah. scientists, 
they they confessed to making them, and I said all of them. Uh, yeah. You know, all over the world. Uh, did you give them my DVD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but,